Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the Sulas Talking Coach Prime, Colorado on the road in Oregon. You'd think Colorado lost last week, by the way, people are talking, but no, they're still 3-0. Uh, this will be their toughest test yet, though. Uh, line is Oregon minus 21, total sitting at 70 and a half. Let's go. Welcome to the Sulas. The Sulas. Sulas. Get the source. So this line's been bouncing around a little. I saw it down at 20 and a half for a few hours. Then I saw it up at 21 and a half for a few hours. Looks to be pretty settled in at an even 21 right now. And we got a pros versus public set up here. Public's definitely betting Colorado. Sharp money definitely on Oregon. All right, I'm going to start out by saying this. I do not care at all about the Colorado State game. I mean, they built it up as some huge rivalry. Coach made fun of Dion's sunglasses or whatever that stupid shit was. Uh, the truth is, it's one of the most maybe the most unimportant game on Colorado's schedule this year. A non-conference game against a terrible team the week before Oregon? You really think that's the game Colorado had circled? They asked Dion about his thoughts of the Colorado-Colorado State history and the rivalry. He straight up said, I don't know much about it. They didn't care about that. The media sold to you that it was a huge rivalry so you would all watch but the truth is it was a complete look ahead spot for colorado this is a game they care about now a positive takeaway from that game would be colorado did a great job against the run uh, now to be fair colorado state can't run the ball for shit they're one of the worst rushing offenses in the fbs but still we're thinking that could be a problem for colorado's defense stopping the run uh, Colorado State had 25 carries for just 70 yards. That's just 2.8 yards per carry. This is where it gets concerning for Colorado. Uh, again, it's a look ahead spot, but still. Braden Fowler Nicolosi making plays in the passing game. I didn't even know this guy was the quarterback. I thought it was Clay Millen. That's who was there last year. Turns out Clay Millen got benched the previous game against Washington State. I didn't even know that. And I, apparently this kid can play. 34-47, 367 yards passing, three touchdowns, three interceptions. The reason that's concerning, they're about to go into Oregon and play Bo Nix. Most would say a top 10, maybe even a top five quarterback in the FBS. Bo Nix looks good as hell to start the season. Now, to be fair, Oregon's only played one legitimate game so far on the road at Texas Tech. But regardless, Bo Nix has been basically perfect. And if Fowler Nicolosi and the Colorado State passing offense gave the Buffaloes problems, Bo Nix and the Ducks might hang 50 points on them. Oregon's got the seventh ranked passing attack in the entire country. I have question marks next to this Colorado defense. All three of their games this year, their opponents kind of did whatever they wanted. Colorado State threw for almost 400 yards. Nebraska, they beat the shit out of Nebraska. Nebraska still rushed for 222 yards on 5.4 yards a carry in that game. TCU, 541 yards of offense. So the Colorado defense hasn't shown they can make consistent stops against anyone yet. Oregon will be the most dangerous offense Colorado's seen so far this season by a good margin. Uh, Oregon's offense is currently ranked ninth in the country. Uh, we just saw TCU hang 42 points on Colorado. Uh, like I said earlier, on paper, the Ducks should score 50-plus. Colorado's best defensive player, by the way, Travis Hunter, he's not playing in this game. He's out for a few weeks, so a huge hit to the defense. Now, on the other side of the ball, we got Oregon's pass defense, and, I mean, they were terrible last year. Oregon's pass defense last year, 72nd in passer rating allowed, 110th in play, uh, yards per game allowed, 127th in sack rate. Holy shit. Uh, they had zero pass rush. This was the 72nd highest rated pass defense in the country. 72nd for Oregon. So what did the Ducks do? They hit the transfer portal hard. Uh, they brought in five new starters on their defense. Edge rusher, two corners, two safeties. All through the portal. All five pieces are starters. So we're looking at a brand new pass defense for Oregon this year. And I was skeptical on whether or not they could take the field and just show us an immediate turnaround. And they kind of have a little bit. I mean, Oregon's rated 26th as far as pass defense goes this year. 27th in opponent passer rating. 11th in yards per game. Passing yards per game allowed. Pass rush has seen an improvement. It's not elite, but it's way better than it was last year. And it's going to need to be at its best in this one because, I mean, we all know what this Colorado offense can can do. I mean, Colorado's offense is serious as shit, whether you're a hater or not. Uh, Shador Sanders is putting up insane numbers. 417 passing yards a game, 78.7% .7 completions, 14 touchdowns, just one pick, 178.7 passer rating. I mean, he's been absolutely excellent to start the season. But I will say, just like the Colorado defense, Shador Sanders and the Colorado passing offense are also facing their toughest opponent yet. Oregon, like I said, 26th ranked pass defense. The best pass defense Colorado has seen so far is Nebraska. 
Nebraska at 67. So this will be the best pass defense Shador Sanders has seen this season by far. Be interesting to see if he's just as electric on the road in Oregon as, as he looked in the first few games. Now let's get to what I'm betting. If I'm just going to be totally honest here, I don't see a ton of betting value in these Colorado games. I, I just don't understand how we're supposed to make a prediction. We've never seen this before. 18 of 22 starters coming in through the transfer portal. Brand new coaching staff in a brand new conference. I, I don't really know how to handicap these games. I mean, I'm excited to watch it. I just, as far as making a prediction, it feels too much like a guess. When I first saw the line, I was like, what the hell? How can you lay three touchdowns to Colorado right now? But after looking at the numbers, it does make sense. I, I see why the line's at 21, especially taking into account that Travis Hunter's out, but I'm not laying 21 points. I mean, I'm probably going to take Colorado plus 21, um, but I don't know how much value is on it. Like I said, this is more, I'm going to have the game on. I'm going to root for Colorado. If I lose, I lose. So give me Colorado plus 21 and let's have some fun. If you want my top bets, parlay of the day. If you want to join the Discord and, and rip on TJ Bolt up, if you're in there, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, and if you want uh, to get in on the NFL against the spread competition this week, I'm giving away a signed David Montgomery jersey. If you're interested in any of that, head over to KyleKerms.com. All the information's on the homepage. College football week four, the most loaded slate of games we've seen this year by far. So much action on. Uh, remember to bet responsibly, and I'll talk to you in the Discord.